Welcome to Electro Online. Here's another viewer request video. How do you evaluate a series like this? And by the way, they give you four possible answers. Only one of those is correct. So we could, of course, add up all the terms. Simply grab a calculator and go through the process and continue to add all the terms and then see which of those is equal to that sum that you end up with. Or perhaps there's a quicker way of doing this. For example, we can probably eliminate one or two answers right away. If you take a look at the answer A, 22 divided by 27 is less than 1. And here we start with the number 1 and we add additional numbers to that. No matter how small they are, the sum of all this can never be less than 1, which means that our first choice, A, is not a good possibility. How about B? Can it add up to 54? Well, you know that each of these terms is less than 1 because it's 1 divided by a big number and you begin to divide it by very big numbers. And there aren't that many terms. There's definitely not 54 terms. So even if there were 54 terms, it still wouldn't add up to 54. So 54 is definitely not a good possibility either. The only two left is C and D. And they're very close in value. Notice when you double the numerator and denominator, you get 26 over 22. So this is equal to 26 over 22. So it's either 26 over 22 or 27 over 22. And they're very, very close together. But let's grab a calculator and evaluate those two. So 27 divided by 22 is equal to... And... That is equal to 1.227272 and so on for it. And this 26 divided by 22 is equal to 1.181818 and so forth. All right. So they are significantly different. And now let's see what the first so many sums, uh, so many terms are added together. So this would be 1 plus 1 over 8, plus 1 over 24, plus 1 over 48, plus 1 over 80. And the next term would be 10 times 12 would be 1 over 120 and so forth. So let's add those terms together. And then if we exceed this number, then this is the only possible answer. If it don't exceed it, we just keep going until either we are equal to 13 over 11 or it exceeds that. All right. So here we have 1 plus 1 divided by 8. And I'm going to write individual uh, sums so far. So here we end up with 1.125. You wouldn't have to do that, but this is just to illustrate so you can see what's going on. So add plus another 1 divided by 24. So now we're at 1.1666. So now we're going to add plus 1 divided by 48. And now we have 1.1875. And notice that this is already bigger than 1.1818 and so forth. So by the time I get to the fourth term, I've already exceeded the answer for D, which means this is not the possible answer. So the only possible answer would be C, 27 over 22. Now it turns out that if you continue adding them all up, it does indeed add exactly to 27 over 22. But you can see how you very quickly can determine which ones are not possible answers. And then very quickly, the third answer is eliminated and you only have one answer left. And that is how it's done very quickly if you're taking a test. Can you do this without a calculator? You could, but it would, uh, you would have to approximate it. So if you're forced to not using a calculator, you could do that longhand division. Right? That's not that difficult to do. And then you would start adding this. And so what you would do is you would probably come up with common denominators. So this goes into, so this would be 1 plus 6 over 48 plus that would be uh, 2 over 48 plus 1 over 48. So that would be 1 plus 9 over 48. And if you go ahead and figure this out, you find that this is already bigger than the 1.1818818. So you could do it by hand. It just would take a little longer. I'm just wondering if you could assume that the, the D denominator is 11. If you look at the denominator of all of them, it's, a, it's an even number denominator. So I, I don't think that. Well, uh, I know that's the rule of 
the reducing you can get to 11, but. Yeah, that, I don't know if that's an absolute ironclad way of looking yeah. at it by, by going ahead and saying, hey, I thought about that as well, actually, yeah. um, but I don't think that's an ironclad way to do it. I think presumably you're allowed to use the calculator, and presumably you can quickly figure out which decimals you have. Well, if you go figure it out, you can already tell that you don't even, if you're going to use a calculator, you don't even need to eliminate A and B, because using a calculator, you can easily done it already. There's no need for elimination. Yeah, let's see. You could, so for answer C, you have 1 plus 5 over 22, which is 1 plus 10 over 44. On answer D, you have 1 plus 2 over 11, which is equal to 1 plus 4 over 22, which is 1 plus 8 over 44. And here you have 9 over 48. 9 over 48 is bigger than 8 over 44, so... Yeah you, don't need, yeah, you don't need a calculator for elimination of A and B. That's yeah. correct. And again, if you turn this into a fraction and you end up with 8 over 44, you know that 8 over 44 is smaller than 9 over 48. So even without a calculator, you can fairly quickly get to the answer as well. It's, again, it's, it's, it's similar in approach.